Mike Blessed is a name that is um, you know, arguably more popular now, or at least in recent years, than it was when he was an active major league ball player. We'll get into that in a second. But Ike is uh, the pride of Hamtramck, as he reminded me last night when we spoke. He said, he said Hi, Greg, I'm from Hamtramck, not from Detroit. <laughs> I said, okay, no problem, my friend. And he's uh, here to talk with us on the knee jerks, and he's on, on the other end of our line. Ike, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. We appreciate it. Uh, you know, let's get, let's, the reason, we should mention now, by the way, that our good friend Dave Mesry, who's a friend of the Knee Jerks, uh, helped set this whole thing up. Dave's been a guest. He's talked about the ham, his Hamtramck baseball, uh, enterprise. He's talked about Hazel Park Raceway. And he also hooked me up with Ike. He said about a month ago, he said, Ike, bless it. Uh, would you like to have him on the show? I said, of course. So uh, thanks to Dave for, for making the initial contact and, and Ike is here and, and um, and I mentioned, Ike, at the top of the discussion that you've been in the news a little bit in recent times because of um, some some challenges you've had. Uh, there was a piece in the Metro Times, for example, that kind of uh, chronicled uh, some of the challenges you've been going through health-wise and otherwise. And I guess the first question I have for you is, how are you doing right now? How are you feeling? Well, I'm doing good, pretty good right now because I two weeks ago I went through a procedure. I guess it's a new one when they uh, shoot a bubble or something into your artery, they open it up so you can breathe. So right now I'm breathing good. I'm sleeping good. I got the tightness out of my chest, and I'm ready to go to work. That's great. Now, what is the work that you're going to go to? Well, you know, I I, I do uh, – I teach hidden. Right. And, then, uh, you know, I soft toss uh, young kids, old kids, high school kids, whatever. So I was getting short of breath, but now I feel good. And I'm just waiting for the uh, the weather to break because uh, some of the major league ball players that I played with uh, helped me put a cage in my backyard. You know, because I have a uh, amputation of my right foot. Right. And I try to drive, so it's hard for me to get to point A to B. So they helped me build a hidden cage in my backyard. So I do lessons outside. So what, what, tell me a little bit more about, we'll get into the major league career stuff in a second. We'll go back in time in a little bit, but I want to talk a little bit more about right now with the hitting thing, the kids. Uh, what, who are they, where are these kids coming from? I know you're based in Hamtramck, but where are these kids coming from, like that, that you're helping out? Well, they, they come from all over Macomb, uh, uh, inner city. Southwest Detroit, you know, down river, you know, I had like 45 to 50 kids last summer, but I lost them because winter time coming, I couldn't continue to work with them in the winter. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get all that out the way. So when the weather break, uh, I'm going to start doing lessons and uh, I have decided I'm going to do younger kids from the age of seven to 10, and I'm going to walk around my neighborhood and uh, I'll charge uh, the parents like $20 a lesson for the kids because I want to give more inner-city kids back into baseball because they're getting away from baseball. Yeah, right. That, that, it's, it's so expensive. Yeah, well, that and, that, that's, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because Al and I have talked about that on occasion throughout the years. We've been doing this podcast for some 13 years, and on occasion we will talk about that, the, the fact that there just don't seem to be, because Al and I grew up in the 70s as kids, and we were always playing baseball. Uh, neither of us were Detroit were Detroit kids, of course. I, I grew up in Livonia, and Al grew up in suburb, suburbs as well, but we both played a lot of baseball. I played Little League. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure Al did, because Al also played high school football and so forth. We played a lot of bass, a baseball, I'm sorry, a lot of baseball, and we would spend all day on the sandlots, just going out, getting a pickup game going, getting five or six kids together, you know, right field was out, you know, pitcher's hand, whatever the case may be. We played all day until the sun came down and we had to go home. And somebody, or, or until somebody left, took the, the bat and ball with them because that was, it was there. So, uh, but it seems like, now this is just the eye test. This is, I don't have any, any data to back this up, Mike, but, my eye test is telling me as I drive around town, uh, I live in Madison Heights, and I drive around the neighboring areas, I just don't see a lot of kids. Well, first of all, you don't even see any kids on their bikes anymore. That, that's a whole other thing. 
but I don't see kids out there even just tossing the ball around, and that kind of concerns me. What do you say about that? Well, what you say about that is, you know, baseball is a very expensive game. You know, you paying five, six hundred dollars for bats now, bags, shoes, yeah, the whole work, and then you pay twenty five to five thousand dollars for a travel team. You know what I'm saying? So when you get basketball, you go get a pair of messed up jeans, cut them off, you got a short. Cut a sleeve of a T-shirt, you got your shirt. And then if everybody preach in a dollar, you go buy a basketball. Now you got 50 people out there saying, I got next. You know, <laughs> and you know, you spend for the whole day with $20 for the ball. You know, mm-hmm. things like that. Football is a different story. Me, back in the days, it was good to play football. Now, I don't recommend football to the kids at the age of seven, eight years old. Mm-hmm. Cause that's too much hitting their head. Right. You know, going through junior, I mean, elementary, junior high and high school. Then you go to college and then pro. That's a lot of banging on your head today. The way they emphasize in weight, getting stronger. Right. You know, before we didn't worry about getting, I mean, we had a little weight. But we weren't strong like they are today, taking your head. We're talking with former Tigers outfield Ike Blessed here on the Knee Jerks. I'm Greg Gino from my WordPress Out of Bounds blog. And Big Al Alpine is with us and will join us in a few in a few moments. Ike, I want to talk about, d- delve more into it about this, the, the kids thing. Um, when, as you, t- as you help these kids out and you, and you, and you, you get them, uh, familiar and more comfortable standing in the batter's box and swinging a bat and so forth, are you getting any sense what their commitment is to the sport? Or do you think many of them are there just because it's something fun to do? Or do you get the impression Ike, that there are some guys that, or some kids that are you're helping out that really truly want to pursue baseball more seriously. Well, you know, a lot of them want to pursue it, but you got more parents involved in their kids playing baseball. You know, it's like living their dream. You know, you know what I'm saying. Uh, and you, you, as you said, and back in our days. Our parents will sit up in the stand and watch the game, and they let the coaching them do the job. But today, you got parents hollering from the bleachers, mm-hmm. telling the son what they're doing, and all this here. That's too much for a young kid. It's, it's a game of fun. And if you take the fun out the game to the young kids, that's when they get older. I don't want to play baseball no more. So they suck the fun out of it, in other words. Yeah, taking the fun out. You you don't have practice no more. You know, where they had the first base screen up, and you got in, everybody's in their position, and your batter's up there hitting fly balls, and the guys are chasing the ball down, learning how, how to get to the ball. Infield, you got coaches hitting ground ball to the third baseman. He throw across to the first baseman, but he got a screen there where he won't get hit. You know what I'm saying? This is learning baseball. You don't do that now. Kids, some like might go a week and don't have no hidden practice, and then you want them to go out and play a tournament. Now they have a bad day that gets on the kids. Um, do you watch a lot of baseball, Ike? I mean, you watch a lot of Major League Baseball right now. No. I, I, you know what? It's a boring sport to me from get-go until I play. Unless I'm playing it. When I'm playing it, I make it exciting to the fans and myself. You know, I like to hear a fan say, damn, he did that? Oh, unbelievable. You know, but by, by me not playing it, I don't watch it because it's a boring sport. They don't hit and run no more. They don't take an extra base. And then when they hit a home run, they throw in the bat up in the air, take them 25 minutes to get around the bases. Pitcher can't throw at them, can't slide into second base. I mean, they're taking everything out of the game, man. 
No, I, and I'm, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing because Al and I have, have said many have, have many of the same complaints that you just uh, chronicled there about about today's game. Where you know, it's, it, it, Al calls it a three outcome game. You know, uh, home run, strikeout, and, and walk. Is that the three outcomes, Al? That you talk about? Yep, those are the three true outcomes. Those is yeah, essentially three, what the game has turned into. Outcomes. Yeah. Yeah, home run, strikeout, and walk, basically. Yeah. And, That's all. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, the hit and run is a, that that doesn't happen very much anymore. The the bunting, the you, you mentioned the sliding into second base, which is that's kind of being legislated to almost out of the game anymore. Right. And, you yeah. just throw it out of the game, you know, and, and then they got this shift on the ball player, and then the ball player go up there trying to hit the ball in between everybody on the right side or the left side. Instead, I mean, me, I bunt the ball. Uh, base hit, mm-hmm. but they don't worry about averages yeah. now. Right. They, you, right. they don't care if you strike out 200 times. Right. That's as long right. as you give them 20 home runs or so <laughs> and 35, I mean, 3,000 3, strikeouts, they don't care. Right. You know, right. you strike out now, you just walk back to the dugout and sit down. Um. We're talking with Ike Blessed, former Tigers outfielder here on the Knee Jerks. I want to continue on about uh, about the difference in the game, uh, Ike, between today and, and when you played some 50 years ago. And let's talk, let's kind of go back now. Let, let's let's kind of let's fire up fire up the wayback machine and take us back to 1967 when you were drafted uh, in the 15th round. You were just 17 years old. The Tigers drafted you uh, right out of high school. Uh, Talk a little bit about about that. How, how you found out about that? How, what that moment was like? What's going through a seventeen-year-old Ike Blessed's mind when he's dra- drafted by the big league Tigers? Well, well, you know, like I tell a lot of people, Ham Cam is a historical period. Mm-hmm. You know, one winning the Little League World Series, Point League World Series, getting honors, and playing against different schools. And at the time, we played against uh, Northern High School. And uh, for him to get them, uh, every week we played two, three games against them. And then when it came to, like, September, January, I mean, January, I should say, uh, I got a phone call telling me that I got drafted by the New York Mets uh, in the first round, first pick. And I was happy, but they lost me because I didn't get out of school to June. Mm. The public school graduated January and June, but Ham Tremmer only graduated in January. I mean, in June. Okay. So it was, it was, I, I wanted it, but as you know, and people don't understand, I played all four sports in high school mm. and I made all state in all four sports. And that's football, basketball, baseball, and track at the same time. Wow. So I had a, a option to go UCLA, USC, Oklahoma, Michigan State, Michigan to play basketball with Rudy Tom Jonovich. Mm-hmm. All this here was, and and it was, it was just an uh, everyday thing for me. But then they lost me, and the Tiger picked me up, 15 round, mm-hmm. and uh, my dad sat me down and we talked. And my dad told me, he said, son, you know you ain't that good in school. Cause not bragging, but I had girls doing my homework in high school to see me play one of the sports, whatever I was playing. And I thought that was a big thing, but in the long run, the long run it hurt me. So right. my dad told me, son, I've been to war. My dad, seven medals, Purple Heart, fought Joe Lewis. And he said, son, I've been through it. I don't want to see you go to Vietnam. Because mm-hmm. that was the Vietnam Oh, yeah, that was a real possibility back then. Sure, of course. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and, I, and I was classified as A1 now. But see, if I had went to school, that would have been fine. But if I had got up to that school and got to partying and didn't get my grades, then I, I would have been drafted to go into service. So... My dad said, think about it, son. I've been shot and everything. It's something that I don't want to see you go through. And that Vietnam War, is, is a, it, it ain't a war. Kids is getting killed. So 
I thought about it. He said, what, well, what do you like to do? I said, well, I saw Jake Woods playing on the Tigers, the first black yep. ball player for the Tigers. Mm-hmm. And I told my dad, well, if it's going to be like that, dad, 10 years from now, I'm going to play with the Detroit Tigers for you. So we ended up winning the Hamtramck Tiger Little League Championship in 1962. And 10 years later, I was with 72 Tigers mm-hmm. winning the, uh, the, uh, the playoff. Right. So my dad, and then, like I said, I had a lot of friends that signed with the Tigers, and they got homesick for uh, for their girlfriend, because you must have said, Jody got your girl and gone. A lot of the guys, Jody did come get their girl. They left baseball with the mm-hmm. Tigers. Mm-hmm. Come home 15 days later, they got inducted in the service, and when at that time they were parachuting into Vietnam, and they was picking them off left and right. Mm. And my five of my friends got picked off uh, before they even hit the ground in oh, Vietnam. Gosh. Oh, gosh. So my, and then my dad pointed out, see what I'm saying, son? You made the right decision. So I couldn't go back to college and play football or nothing because – once you sign that contract, yeah, right. you were professional. Right, exactly. So right. so I ended up putting all out in baseball because yeah. that's what I did. You know, but whatever, whatever sport it was, I excelled in it. I wanted to be the best. So baseball happened to be the one I chose over football, basketball, and track because mm-hmm. of the situation. So I... Play baseball. Had good seasons. Well, we should mention to the to the to the listeners that um, <laughs> back then that 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 decision was not necessarily based on money because, as you know, as you well know, that was just before the baseball salaries really exploded because that didn't happen to like the mid '70s when when the, the when the the free agency hit and everything. So that and when you became a major league baseball player in '72. The salaries, yeah, okay, they were good. I mean, they were probably better than maybe uh, you know any guy working on a, on, a, on a factory line. But we're not talking about millions of dollars. Like you know, it wasn't like you guys could work and be a baseball player and only do that. I mean, a lot of a lot of Tigers, some a lot of your teammates worked around. You know, did off season jobs. Oh yeah, oh for sure. Yeah. You know, like Lenny Green, mm-hmm. he was well, after the season. Lenny Green worked for security for Ford Motor Company. And he tried his best to get me uh, in the wintertime to play, I mean, to work at Ford. But the Tigers kept sending me to winter ball Mm. in Dunedin, Florida. Mm -hmm. And then they ended up sending me to Mexico in 70, in in 70, in 70, they Mm -hmm. sent me to winter ball in Mexico. So So I didn't get, I didn't get a chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you so, couldn't work. Yeah. I couldn't work because he kept sending me. Right. <laughs> We're talking with Ike Blessed, former Tigers outfielder on the Knee Jerks. I'm Greg, you know, from my WordPress Out of Bounds blog. And Big Al Albines here. And Big Al, what you got for Ike Blessed? Well, you were called up to the bigs, in, uh, as you said, in September 1972. And that was uh, during the infamous Billy Martin era. And obviously, they were in the middle of a huge playoff race at the time. Uh, was Billy Martin as miserable as a person as we've come to learn after his death that he was one of the hardest people to get along with, that he was a very hard person to play for? Well, you know, I, with me, you know, I had a, a like old OK Corral fight with him. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that really hurt my career with the Tigers fighting Billy Martin. There's a lot of people out there that, I didn't talk about the story because I still had the the big league mentality to play in the big league. So I kept my mouth closed. But now here I am, 72 years old, and people ask me about Billy Martin. Yeah. You know, I ain't got no reason to lie about him. He's mm-hmm. a hell of a manager, good manager. Yeah. You know, he gets a hundred percent out of you. But outside the white line, I I didn't appreciate his lifestyle. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't have a I didn't have a, a good lifestyle either. A lot of ball players, 
You know, when you get to the big league, you have a different lifestyle. You know, but I didn't like the lifestyle of Billy Martin. And when I tell people that, everybody think I'd be, be lying about Billy. Why should I lie? You know, man, dead mm-hmm. and gone, so I tried not to really talk about what led to the fight between me and Billy Martin. People out there saying I didn't fight Billy Martin, but I got six minor league ball players who was in the bar with me at the time me and him went at it because he said to me, nigga, you should have died because I tried to lose weight mm-hmm. for him to make the club. And you know when they wore those astronaut suits back then, I put one of those on, mm-hmm. which people don't know what the astronaut suit is. It's one of those... Uh, the, the old rubber uh, running suits, suits that made you yeah, sweat. You're right. Yeah. And right. you have rubber around your neck, right. your wrist, yep. your waist, and your leg. Yep. And I took water pill to lose weight, and I dehydrated. Out there running in that sun, they had to rush me to the hospital and get IV back in me. So I survived that, and I went to... The spring, I mean, marching stadium the next day, and my locker was cleaned out. Hmm. And they said, they sending you down. And, well, uh, and yeah, just to follow up. Yeah, it's a yeah, follow so up on Jim that. Said, right. Yeah, so, yeah to follow up so on Jim that. Jim uh, uh, you, that. No, yeah, I was just going to follow up on that a little bit because obviously you had the incident with Billy Martin and. You had some very productive seasons in the minors in the Oakland and Milwaukee systems. Do you think that incident led you to be blackballed from being back in the major leagues? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It did. It did. And uh, thank God for uh, Tim Holsley. You know, may he rest in peace. He played for the Tigers. Mm -hmm. You know, he got me to Oakland because Mm -hmm. Claiborne was the farm director and he saw I was on the market, uh, no longer the Tiger. And he asked uh, Tim, "What kind of ball player and uh, what kind of personality is Ike Blessed?" And Tim Holden said he got a raw deal over there with the Tigers because of Billy Martin. Mm-hmm. The boy is a ball player. He loved the game. He played with his teammates. He's not a fighter, as they put him out there to be. So. Claiborne said, well, I'm going to take a chance with him. So I went from the Tigers to Oakland, Oakland A's. And I had two good years in the minor leagues for the Oakland A's in Tucson, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And they were looking for a right-hand power hitter. And instead of taking me, they took Rich McKinney, who played for the White Sox. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they took him. And Champ Summers was there. Ah, okay. So I said, okay. So I had two good years with Oakland, Oakland, uh, with Billy Martin again. Mm-hmm. I caught right. Billy Martin in Oakland coming out of the way because he got fired from the time. Right, right. And then when Oakland picked him up, and I saw Billy Martin in a bar. I went up and told him, man, you know, you really have my season, my career of playing baseball. And he said he was sorry. He said, what's you doing now? I said, in, in another week and a half, I'm going back to Mexico because I got a job in Monclova, Mexico. And I got to be down there in a week and a half for spring training. So he said, I right, hold off. I'll get you another job somewhere in the, in the system. I said, okay. But at the time, I'm waiting and waiting and waiting mm-hmm. for to get this job back in the state. But I figured it out. He did it just to screw with my career again mm. because I was late going to Mexico and they got another American ball player. So now wow. I'm screwed yeah. going back to Mexico, depending on playing back in the state because Billy said he's going to get me a job. Hmm. Wow. And when I tell people this, when I tell people this, they say I'm lying. Why well, I got to lie about this? Right. If you wasn't there, how can you tell I'm telling a lie? Because they in love with Billy Martin. You didn't play for Billy Martin. 
And if you look at his history, he don't have a good history. So well, I know that I, I, one of your old teammates, Ike, um, Jim Northrup, told me many years ago <laughs> that <laughs> that uh, he absolutely just detested playing for Billy Martin because he said that it, Billy was all about Billy. If, if the team was doing well, he took the credit. If the team wasn't doing well, it was always the player's fault. And he he got ended up getting uh, cut and, and got picked up by uh, Baltimore. And he told me he said I love playing for Earl Weaver. And I said, boy, I, they seem like two of the, like two of the same kind of guys. He says, no, no, no. He says Earl made the game fun. He 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 respected me as a, as a person. And and you know, hey, I'm I'm like you, Ike. I don't I don't I don't want to sit here and spend a lot of time trashing Billy Martin either. But I'm just saying this to. To, to give you just one example of, and I know that Northrop is very, you know, outspoken about a lot of things, but he's not a liar, and he's not he's he's not somebody who's gonna, you know, say that just to say it either. So when Jimmy told me that he did not have any good feelings about Billy Martin, it's commensurate with what you're saying, and it's too bad that it has to be that way because Bill, like you said, Billy was a hell of a manager, and um, you know that whole dynamic with Reggie Jackson, which I always found fascinating, because Reggie's an asshole as well, by the way. Oh, tell me about oh, it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, the fact that um, that always kind of that, that that relationship was always fascinating to me. But anyways, yeah, I'm looking up these these numbers here, uh, Ike, as, as you were talking to Al, and Al's right. You had some really good uh, years. You had a really good year in '75. Uh, in Tucson, in a triple-A ball uh, with, with the A's. And in 77, at double-A, playing in the Brewers system, you had 17 home runs, 104 RBIs, and batted 299. He tore and it up. <laughs> and at that, at the, at, right, and at that time, you're only 27 years old. So how did one man keep you out of baseball like that? Because I can't find it hard to believe well, that that well, you know, last, you know, but, back there, Back then, they stuck together. Okay. They all the stuff together, mm-hmm. you know. And then they they say you do me a favor, I do you a favor. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? And but you forgot to tell people, I said 104 RBIs and only 17 home runs. I didn't have no sacrifice flies. Right. So you get it. Right. So. Right. <laughs> Where, 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 now, yeah, who would it be, major league, minor league, uh, rookie ball, whatever, you going to stumble into a sacrifice fly. <laughs> I didn't have not one, and I went up to bat 499 times. You are, and you. by the way, I'm looking at these numbers as you're talking, and you are dead on. You are, everything you're saying is absolutely true. 17 home runs. 104 RBI, no sacrifice fly. I'm getting this from baseballreference.com. 499 at bats. You are right on, man. You are. You didn't. You've got. You're, you're still. You got a steel trap memory when it comes to your own numbers, my man. Well, you know, it, it was there. Things I did. You know what I'm saying? I'm the 2020 club in Montgomery, Alabama. I could have went 30 30 club. But I, I, at that time, I wasn't thinking about hitting 30 home runs and 30 stolen bases. I had 22 home runs, and I had 27 stolen bases. Got that right and I was hitting 20, 20 balls. <laughs> but I, it, didn't, it didn't dawn on me, because if it had dawned on me, I had about five games that was rained out that I had home runs in it. I could have easily hit 3030. Right. Right. So I had my years, but come look at it. Something happened where I couldn't get back to the major league. And now, that's when they go black ball. Which brings me now to the whole, the, the real, the, in all seriousness, uh, which brings me to the, the tragedy of this whole thing. I mentioned the, at the top of the discussion about how, you know, you've had some challenges both physically and, and financially. And one of the reasons why, let's, let's be, let's just say it the way it is, is because you missed out on the pension. You, you, you needed, you didn't need, how much more, how many more days I, I did you need in, in, in the big leagues to get the pension? 10 days. 10 days. So 10 days have separated you 
potentially separated you from a much more potentially a more comfortable life financially, correct? Right, right, right. Okay, now the 10 days were, you didn't get them. Why? Because Billy Martin had it out for you. Right, right. And I didn't get a chance to come back. You know, an incident I didn't with, at a hotel with a with a young girl, and right. I'm, I'm not ta- I'm not telling tales out of school because this was in the Metro Times piece. There was, there was a girl who Billy was out with one night at the Leland Hotel, and he wanted you to drive her home. I think to Birmingham or something. Right. You find right. out the girl is you find out the girl is 16, and and you're thinking, no way in hell am I, am I as a black guy going to drive this 16 year old white girl to Birmingham at one o'clock in the morning, right? No. I'm 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 bringing back the South out there. It'll it lynch me real quick, right. you know. And, and knowing the girl, you know she's gonna say she was with me because her parents, and they're gonna gonna sugarcoat Billy Martin. Right. You, know, you put two and two together. Right. And, but I did the dumb thing. I gave her money to take a cab home, but I did a stupid thing. That I re, it re, I regret myself. I went and confronted Bill in in the LAC, well, and that's where it all started. Now, if I took myself home, right, like I supposed to have, he would have thought I took her home because if you notice, know Billy Martin always had ball pitchers, ball players with him when he went out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the, the Lindell, the Lindell was a was a popular place for people to get into it. <laughs> That's for sure. You, you ain't lying. Dave Boswell in '69, but uh, so you, so you, you couldn't for whatever reason couldn't help yourself, but but to lay into Billy, you were so enraged by what he was trying to pull on you. And you right. wish you probably kept your had you and I'm not trying to blame you, but you're saying that had you just kept your mouth shut and just you know bit your tongue, that maybe none of that histrionics would have happened with him cutting you in '73 and so on. Right, right. Okay. Well, you know, well, I had a good, I had a good spring training. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and like I said, you know, people don't understand. When I talk about Willie Horton, Gage Brown, Jim North, Mickey Stanley, and they all came out. I wasn't disrespecting them, but I told them, get them out of there. Give me a chance. I can win give, give me a spot. Not just as a disrespecting them, but the eager I had in what Ike Blessing could do. You see what I mean? Because mm-hmm. all ball players are like that. They want to play. Right. They're not going to step aside and give you a job. Right. But people hear me talk about that. Are oh, you disrespecting Willie Hoyt? No, I'm not disrespecting Willie Hoyt. The same, the same style, Louis D'Annunzio, that signed Willie Horton six years later, signed me. Mm-hmm. So he saw something in both of us. Right. You see what I'm saying? And people don't understand that. K-Line, he said to me one day, he said, Ike, have your parents ever seen you play with the Tiger uniform on? I said, no, Al. And that day we played against Boston uh, back in Detroit. It was televised. Mm -hmm. He said, don't worry about it. Okay, second inning, he went and told Billy, he said, Billy, I got a little tweak. In my real case, and I don't want to press it, put Ike in for me. So Billy said, Ike, you going in next in for a cave I, I go loosen up, warm up, and everything, and I go in. So I ended up that day, four for four, inside the park home run, and five RBI, four RBIs for k this was spring training '73. Yep. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? Did so you, did, I got the potential, but when they brought me to the big league in September, I'm not a, a pinch hitter. 
I didn't thrive on just sitting on no bench. Just you put me up one time, I get you a hit. Right. I'm an everyday ball player, and the oh, I talk to Pete Rose, everybody, and I like saying saying uh, with, with uh, Pittsburgh McGee. Say, uh, what's the catcher? Oh, San Gian? Yeah, I asked him about hitting. He told me in his language, "If you like it, go get it. <laughs> Swing <laughs> at it." That's well, and Manny would was yeah that that doesn't surprise me because Manny Sankian came out of the dugout swinging as they say I don't I don't yes, know he, he, he it was it was hard to walk Manny Sankian that's for sure Ralph right. Moore and all those other guys it was hard to walk those guys for sure uh, uh, well Manny was a very good Manny yeah. was a very good bad ball hitter though he was one of the better that's bad what, ball hitters in baseball that's what I was yeah mm-hmm. that's what I teach these young kids. You know, these coaches and guys who think they can hit, they can't hit. That upswing, drag the bat, and do this. You don't see nobody go in the right field now. Everybody want to pull the ball. I tell all my kids, be a bad ball hitter. If you see it, you like it, go get it. Mm-hmm. That's the best thing you can tell a kid. And, and I tell kids, I tell the parents, if it's anywhere, you can take him to play racquetball. Take him to play racquetball now. Because as a good eye and hand coordination, racquetball. I played it. They had an Amtramic. And Dewey Lincoln, that who was a, a All-American at the University of uh, Michigan State, he the one took me out there and played racquetball with me. That's why I tell him the ball is so good. I play racquetball. Interesting. Interesting. Think yeah, about it. Yeah, a lot of baseball players play golf, but that's interesting. I, I, I can I can see that, though, uh, with the high, hand-eye coordination thing. We're going to wrap things up here with Ike Blessed on the knee jerks. Al, do you got anything before, for Ike before we let him go? Uh, yeah, just a, a kind of a quick follow-up of your experiences in the major leagues. I know the Tigers were one of the last teams to integrate. They, I think they didn't even integrate until 1959. Do you think Major League teams had a, uh, I guess, a lack of a better term, quota when it came to the number of black men they would have on their roster. Three. That was the quota. Some wow. of them four, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know that that you, you, mentioned, you mentioned Gates. You mentioned, I'm not sure if you mentioned, uh, I, I can't remember who else you may, you may have mentioned, the black players you mentioned, but I know Gates Brown, well, Willie, of course, but Gates used to tell stories about segregation and, and problems he had in the minor leagues traveling, and not even in the minor, minor leagues, I mean, also in the big leagues, traveling you know, as late as the mid to late sixties, if you can imagine such, such a thing of, of discrimination. And he's a big league ball player at that point. That, that, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and, but people don't understand either. If you sit down and talk to every black ball player that played back in that era, each ball player got his own story. Mm-hmm. So how can one other ball black ball player tell me I'm lying about yeah. a situation I had in the minor league. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's an ego trip when it comes to black ball player. But every black ball player got his own bad time in the right. major league or in the South playing baseball. Right, right. And if anybody say they didn't, they know, it's a lie, and I tell them in their face. Mm-hmm. Take a survey sometime. Yeah, no. well, I can imagine. I can imagine. Ike, uh, so glad that you're feeling better. Uh, I know uh, that's really good news that that, that 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 procedure that you had seemed to have helped you, and that you're, you're breathing better, and and the weather's going to be turning pretty soon to get back with helping those kids out and swinging the bat in the in the batting cage, and and um, and you t- helped us go back down memory memory lane here tonight. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Thank you. But can Thank I you. say one last word? Go for it. Okay. I, I, if anybody want to look at the career that I had while I'm still working with kids and everything and want to know more about me, look at my website, 
my website is www.tigerike.org. Okay. Awesome. And that's my whole, that's from beginning to my career to up to now, how I still stayed in the game of baseball to help kids. I see it right now. Oh, oh very nice. Very yeah, nice we'll have links site. to it on the show notes, definitely. Yeah, that's a nice looking <laughs> site. Well, thanks, yeah, thanks for letting us know about that. Ike Blessed, that's uh, tigerike.org. Uh, Al says they'll put, put it in the show, uh, in the description under the, in the show uh, link and uh, so forth. And Ike, uh, um, thanks so much for doing this, my friend, and, and be well. Hey, man, look, it's been a pleasure. Thank you guys anytime. You know, okay. Anytime. Awesome. Thanks, Ike. Take care. All right. All right. Bye bye.